Now, the feds were actually, they started their whole investigation into BMF around 2002. Yes. Uh, it was a special division called the Operation Motor City Mafia. Yes, oh, they had the Drano, you know, yeah, Drano too. Yeah, but it's still, it's the Drano, they, uh, that's the, uh, that's their, their narcotics division up there in Detroit, uh, narcotics riot and narcotics di division. So that's what they do over there. Uh, they, yeah. Okay. But that started, the way that started, it, it that started out with a phone call from someone in prison that, because nobody knew, and you are, you, you, that's, that, that, that's accurate, that's the accurate account because no one knew about BMF unless you were there that day or you were just in the inner circle. We weren't really using that until 2003. The, in, the, you know, about that time, about just, just before uh, the All-Star, All-Star weekend up in, in Atlanta, we had been, we had, it had been silent up until that point. Not silent, but, you know, uh, maybe about 2002, 2001. The, the investigation started about 2000, 2001 into that it, with a phone call from, from jail. Tonisa Welch was talking with her, 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 uh, her husband at that time, the guy I was telling you about earlier named Harold. And this guy started, and he jumped on the case and started an investigation. They went and checked everything. They listened to the phone calls and everything. You know, she was just had a son with, with, with Harold before he went back in. His name's Corey right now. So that was Harold's little son. And, uh, you know, he wasn't calling back home to talk to the baby. So the only person that he could have got this information from was from her, which later turned out that she, yeah. So 2004, there's a wiretap with this guy named Smurf, like a low level crack deal in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. uh, he was talking to this guy named uh, uh, DeCarlo Hoskins. Mm -hmm. And Hoskins said that he'd grown around, he grew, grew up around BMF guys. And there was two guys he dealt with, uh, Omari McCree and mm -hmm. Jeffrey Lear. Mm -hmm. were BMF members. They were supplying them with kilos. Mm -mm -mm. So now the feds kind of had these guys on their radar. 2004, Lear was pulled over with his girlfriend because of the wiretaps. And they find 10 kilograms of cocaine. Mm -hmm. uh, they let him go. Catch and release. Catch and release. But now McCree and Lear owed all that money to BMF. Mm -hmm. And they went on the run, right? And they ultimately ended up cooperating. Of course, they were cooperating <laughs> soon right after they got caught. They, when they took off, that was it. They were, you already knew, cause they, right? Yeah. And McCree actually uh, signed on as a confidential informant. Yes. And he actually named Big Meech yes. as his supplier for cocaine. Yes, o Omari McCree. Yes. Uh, I guess. Call him old dog. Yeah, old dog. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I did see Omari in prison when he was supposed to be coming and testifying on Meech, but he never did it. Um, you know, I had a chance to talk to him before Meech's sentencing came up, before Meech's stuff was even done. And I guess they pulled the kid back from state prison, you know, because he was going to give some information that was going to get his time cut. But I don't know if it was seeing me in there or, you know, what, how he had to change a heart or whatever it was, but he never went to court. So, so this guy was going to testify against Meech and ended up changing his mind before he took the stand. Right, but he had already gave the information, so it don't matter. He's still told. So then j -Bo got tied into this as well. Yes. And that was the second command at BMF? Well, that's who Meech put in charge, you know, yeah. as a face to, to CEO. But on his own, he was... He was his, he did his thing. Yeah. And then uh, the feds had their star witness, William Doc Marshall. Oh my God, he was the worst. This guy come out of Florida, terrible. Wasn't he the guy that kept all the books? No, no, uh, no. See, that's the way they had made it appear so they can see him efficient. They were not, they didn't know anything. What had happened was William Doc Marshall, B.I., was dealing with a guy from T's camp over there. His name was. Eric Bivens, E, Slim, you might know him, you might have heard his name, um, but he, were, he was out of Florida also. He was selling cocaine to, 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 to B.I. So B.I. got robbed one night. Somebody came in, B.I. killed someone to, in protection of the drugs. That's what brought him in 
you know, and then they asked him where the drugs come from, and they said E, and then they were doing an investigation already, plus Eric, E, uh, he's already, he's got a long his, criminal history, so he was already messed up. He was, you know, a suspect anyway, but he was over there at Terry's new camp. So what it was was he uh, ended up introducing B.I. to Terry. I have all those, I have all those documents, it, 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 you know, word for word. So. so now they have a real case. They have. They're, they're connecting it. They they're connecting, connecting the, the drugs. Dots. They're connecting murder and stuff with, 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 with William Doc Marshall. You understand? So that's how that happened with that. 